Good morning. Welcome to St. James. We are glad that you are here together in worship today. Hopefully, as you entered the sanctuary, you received a copy of our worship bulletin. On the back of the bulletin, there's a calendar of some upcoming ministry opportunities this week. And just before that, there are some printed announcements. Next Saturday is our great day of service. The activities that are uh, planned for that day are listed there. If you know that you want to participate in one of these, if you would go online and just let us know so we'll be sure we have enough people for each event, uh, you can still sign up if you haven't done that already. Today, the combined adult Sunday school class will begin meeting. They'll meet at 945 in room 305. They are studying uh, Adam Hamilton's book, Unafraid, uh, but you don't have to commit to being there every Sunday throughout the month of June to participate in this. Even if you, uh, you don't even have to read, I'm being told. They'll, the teachers will do the reading for you and the class will be the cliff notes if you are old enough to know what cliff notes are. Uh, and uh, we have a combined uh, children and youth Sunday school class uh, meeting throughout the summer as well. There is still an uh, opportunity to fill out the adult education survey. Thank you for those who have. Uh, it helps us a lot to know classes you've had and things that you uh, would like to learn in the future. Uh, so if you haven't filled that out already, you can do that online and uh, help our adult education committee. This summer, we uh, will have community food, food trucks uh, on June 19th, July 17th, and August 14th. So please put those on your calendar, invite your friends to come join us for these community events. There are a few of our summer camps that have some spots available. If you're still looking for activities for children or grandchildren, many have filled up, including our Vacation Bible School. So please be in prayer for all of our volunteers and all the kids who will be part of Vacation Bible School later this month. And uh, there is a notice there that uh, we are in need of some extra help with our uh, nursery. Uh, some of our nursery workers have uh, uh, had to take other jobs, so we have a couple of openings. If you know of anybody who might be interested in that, please contact uh, Susanna, and we'd love to hear from them. At this time, I'd like to invite you to stand and greet one another in the peace of Jesus Christ. As we continue to worship, uh, I invite you to a few moments of silence as we reflect on God's presence here in this place today. I invite you to stand as you are able as we join together in the call to worship that's printed in your order of worship. God, who is one, you call us to be one. God, who is three, you call us to be community. May we find community for all who are called by your name. 
We unite with sisters and brothers from all Christian churches and denominations. We unite with followers from every church and congregation. We unite with God's sons and daughters from every creed and culture. Amen. Remain standing as you're able and let us lift our voices together in song with hymn number 547, O Church of God United. You may be seated. This morning we go before God and we remember these celebrations and concerns of the community. You'll note that our celebrations and concerns are listed in the shaded portion of your bulletin. I also remind you if there is anything that you would like to bring before this body to hold in prayer together with you, you can call the church office or talk to any of the clergy and we would be happy to add that to the list. This morning, we remember Anne Barron, Tricia Evans, Jerry Maldemog, Lawrence Montgomery, Monty Shackelford, Anne Wadley, and Catherine Wells. We also continue to have Wayne Polk on that list, but want to let you know that he's currently at Northside Hospital. We extend sympathy to Mary Scheffler and family upon the death of her father, Sam McNeil, as well as to Marianne Mullins and her family in the death of her mother, Mary Willingham Moore. We also extend sympathy to the family of Linda Newton. Linda passed on Friday. Her service will be this upcoming Friday, June 7th at 2 p.m. at Peachtree Presbyterian. 
Let us now go before God together as we sing together this call to prayer. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus. Holy and merciful God, we give you thanks this morning for the life of Jesus among us, for the love that we continue to experience in Jesus' name each day, and for the ways in which we see the gifts of your blessings in our lives. We pray this morning that you would be with the concerns lifted up before you, as well as those concerns that rest silently in our hearts. We pray this morning for the sick and the dying, for those who are friendless and lonely, for those who are living with grief or depression. We pray that you would bring them your friendship and that you would renew their joy. May they remember how deeply they are loved. And may we, with your wisdom and strength, know how to love them. We pray for families, communities, and nations torn apart by violence. From Virginia Beach to the stories that we have not yet heard, may you bring comfort and peace to those families and to those communities. We pray that you would heal the broken places and heal the earth with your peace. Almighty God, we know that there is no place that you have not been before. There is no darkness where your light cannot reach. There is no depth where you are not willing to go. We pray that all may know this that all may know your saving, redeeming love. We pray for ourselves, for your church, that we may bear fruit of peace, of hope and love, that we may be your body here in this world and that all may come to know you. Loving God, help us to love others as Christ has loved us. Bring us into the spiritual joy of living as your friend and teach us to abide in your love that we may show that love to the world. Come into our hearts this morning and give us eyes to see throughout this day all the ways that you love us. Put your resurrecting power to work in our lives and empower our lives to be a witness to Christ that your love may be known in us to all the world. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of St. John, the 17th chapter, beginning at verse 20. I invite you to stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. Jesus says, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them so that they may be one as we are one. I and them and you and me that they may become completely one so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them 
and I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Today marks the last Sunday in the season of Easter. Often we celebrate this as Ascension Sunday. The 40th day after Easter would have been last Thursday when we remember Jesus being taken back up into heaven. Ten days before the Spirit descends at Pentecost. This year in our worship throughout the Easter season, we have been focusing on the call to love that Jesus issues. And most of those passages that we have read have come from the end of John's gospel, from this scene where Jesus has this long discussion with the disciples in the upper room on his last night with them. And over and over, he tells them, that part of their job, part of their witness to the world is the love that they should have for one another. So in these days of resurrection, in these days of Easter, we have been focusing on that call to love and how we can concretely live that out in our life as disciples today. Today will be the last Sunday in that series. Next Sunday will come and it will be Pentecost and there'll be red and all sorts of strange things going on for Pentecost. When we remember the Spirit descending on the disciples, empowering us to live out that love. And then on June 16th, we will begin a new series that will take us through the stained glass windows of St. James. I know many of you, when you get bored in my sermons, stare at the stained glass windows anyway, so I'm going to prepare sermons that are going to encourage you to do that. There is a story to these windows, each window laid out according to a theme and patterned to encourage us to live our lives walking with Christ. So we'll be exploring that together through most of the summer. Today, though, to wrap up this Easter series, this call to love, we focus on this prayer that Jesus has for his disciples. For three chapters, he's been teaching them, giving him some of his last instructions. And then in the 17th chapter, the whole chapter is a prayer that Jesus offers. He prays first for himself. He prays for the courage to continue to fulfill God's will in his remaining hours. He prays for the disciples gathered in that room around that table. And then he prays for you and for me. He prays for those who will come to believe in him through the witness of those who were first gathered in that room. And whether we first heard the words from a, the lips of another disciple or whether we first encountered them through the written scriptures, you and I are here in part today because those words of witness have been passed down to us. So when you hear these words, hear them as Jesus praying for us. Prayer is a very vital part of our life as Christians. We talk about the great privilege we have to approach God, to pour out to God our joys, our concerns, our sorrows, our celebrations, to be in communication with the creator of the universe and to know that our God hears those cries of our heart. Sometimes we even extend it to think about the time we need to spend listening to God in prayer, listening to how God speaks to us in our lives today. But here we are reminded that Christ also prays for us. Do you ever stop to think about that? that? That part of why he has ascended back to be with God is so that he can be there, as it says in Hebrews, interceding for us daily, hourly. 
in times of trial, in times of sorrow, in times when our hearts may be heavy, take some comfort in knowing that Christ is praying for you. And listen to what he prays for his disciples. I pray that they may all be one as you and I are one. He prays for unity among the disciples, but the type of unity that he prays for is not conformity. He doesn't pray that we all be exactly the same any more than Jesus is the same as the Father or the Father is the same as the Spirit. This gets into the heart of what we come to hold as one of our deepest mysteries in the faith, the understanding of the Trinity. And part of what is at stake in our belief in the Trinity is that God is this unity, but there is some distinction, there is some difference in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So part of what that means for us as believers today is that there should be a way for us to be united. There should be a way for us to be held together. That doesn't mean we all have to look exactly the same. We all have to act exactly the same. We all have to think exactly the same. But there is a deeper unity that binds us together that mystery of God's love. Of a love that creates community, not by excluding others, but is constantly reaching out to include others into our fellowship. It is a unity that is displayed at the very heart of our worship. In a mystery that we gather around time after time, when we come to this table and we break bread from one common loaf, we distribute it to individuals. But even in that distribution, we are reminded that there is a unity that holds us together. That we all eat from the same spiritual food and we all drink from the same spiritual drink. I want to encourage you this morning as we celebrate communion to pray, but to pray with your eyes open. Watch the people who come forward. Watch your fellow believers. Note their differences. Note the different ways they're dressed, their different heights, their different shapes, different hair colors. And give thanks that in the midst of all that diversity, there is a love that unites us stronger than any of those differences. A love that makes us whole as the body of Christ. And strengthened from that spiritual food and that spiritual drink, we go forth into the world to invite others into the mystery of this love. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we prepare to gather around this table called by love, let us stand together and sing Bread of the World, hymn number 624.
You may be seated, and as you are, I invite you to turn to page 12 in your hymnals as we together are invited to this table. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love and have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. I now invite our ushers to come forward as we, as forgiven and reconciled people, offer ourselves and our gifts to God.
You may be seated, and as you're seated, I invite you to turn back to page 13 in your hymnal for our prayer of great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the face of the waters. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. Your spirit came upon the prophets and teachers, anointing them to speak your word. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. At his baptism in the Jordan, your spirit descended upon him and declared him your beloved son. With your spirit upon him, he turned away the temptation of sin. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the presence of your Word and Holy Spirit, baptizing us with your Spirit as a flame of fire on the day of Pentecost. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to those gathered there and said, drink from this all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. For out upon us gathered here your spirit, and on these gifts of food and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes again and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
morning we'll have two stations uh, at the front of the altar rail. As you come forward, we'll hand you a piece of bread. If you'll take the bread and dip it in the chalice and receive the bread and the wine together, this will allow all of us to share in these gifts. The bread is gluten-free, so uh, everyone can participate in the uh, celebration of this meal. During the communion today, you're invited to either pray at the altar rail after receiving communion or return to your pews and pray there. If you want to give an offering for communion, that will go to the Bishop's Special Mission Offering for Annual Conference this year. You don't have to be a member of St. James of the United Methodist Church to participate in this meal. These are God's gifts offered to all who will receive them. Let all who will come. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this mystery in which you pour out your love for us. May it truly unite us, not just with you, but with each other, so that we can go forth to give ourselves in loving service to the world, inviting them into the fellowship of full communion with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn today is number 170. I invite you to stand as we sing, Oh, How I Love Jesus.
as you go forth, go forth knowing that Jesus also loves you, is praying for you. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit strengthen you each step of the way. Amen.